Emily back in the Child Care CRM studios, and I am joined by Brian Dupre, our longtime friend, Child Care Center owner of multiple sites, uh, Child Care Business Coach, and published author with his new book coming out in October, Child Care Millionaire. Hello, Brian. Hello, Emily. How are you? Awesome. Feeling in great. In Dallas, huh? Good to be in Texas. My <laughs> God, it's hot here. It is hot in here. You would think it was fall, but it's... No, it's hot. We skip right over autumn. I live in Maine, and, you know, it didn't get this hot. <laughs> Yeah. So you've got a new book coming out. I do. Are you excited? Oh, yeah. Tell okay. us a little bit about the book. We'll get into it later, but give us the high level of it. Child Care Millionaire, Secrets to How to Build a Profitable 7 or 8 Figure Child Care uh, Business. I've done it and uh, help clients do it every single day. I'm so excited. It's going to be available uh, very soon on Amazon.com. Love it. We're, I've been looking forward to it forever. But So, Brian, your story is one of my very favorites. So we're going to talk about how you became a, a center owner and then a multi-site owner, but what did your life look like before Little Angels? Uh, my wife and I actually are both in the U.S. Navy. So we spend, uh, I spent eight years in the Navy, she spent 10 years in the Navy, that's how we met. And, uh, and we just loved our country, so we decided we would serve. And, and then we had, a, we had got orders overseas and we knew that it wouldn't be good for our kids. So we decided to get out in uh, 1993, we both got out of the Navy. Okay. And so you started a child care center on a whim or I mean, what's the story there? You got out of the Navy and just decided that's it? Yeah, child that, care? Child care was the last thing on my mind. <laughs> and uh, if I had to do it again, yeah, I'd probably still be in the child care business, but I would have done a little bit different. I would have made a lot less mistakes. Uh, but we actually, we when we got out of the Navy, uh, they were downsizing the military at the time, so we got bonuses to get out. They actually paid us to get out of the military. So I took that money and I started a mortgage business, and, and I quickly failed that, and I bankrupted us. And, you know, and as a lot of people that have failed in business, what do they do? Get right back on the right. horse. So Fail we decided, forward. yeah, we we moved to Maine, and and I started a, a fax advertising business, and my wife was looking for a job. Fax and, advertising. Did you say that? Yeah, fax advertising. Some of you that are watching will never know what that is. Fax advertising. All right. I had, a okay. <laughs> I had a company. I had this newsletter I sent out every day, and I sold advertising on it. Okay. And I started the company, and it was successful. I actually sold it in the year 2000, and uh, and I, I used that money and, and, and worked, and I went into the main legislature. I used that money to fund a campaign, and I got elected to the main legislature. But when we first moved to Maine, uh, my wife was looking for a job, and whoever got the job first, we were going to go. And I was looking for a job in doing the fact business, and she got a job working at a, for a child care center, but not watching kids. She got a job doing their books. She was a bookkeeper. She did their quick books because okay. they owned a, uh, another company as well. So that's how we kind of got our first dab at the child care business. I gotcha. All right, so that was your first entry, and then since then you've opened five centers, or I mean, you, now you have five. Yeah. Um, when I talk to owners, directors, they tend to have these moments of their career that they pivot, or they say, I don't know if this is for me, and they have a big decision to make. Have you ever had a turn back moment, or have you just been straightforward, you and Carol knew this is where you were gonna be your whole life? No, so when my wife was doing the books for that company, and uh, so they were gonna close this daycare center, and my wife was like, you know, we could make money doing this thing. And I'm like, really? So we took over their business. Actually, they gave us the keys to it, and they said, here you go, watch your kid for free, and it's yours. So that's how we got in the childcare business. And the rent was a little high. We weren't really making a whole lot of money there. So we just said, you know what, we can make more money moving this into our house. So but it was only a couple miles away. So we brought our kids over to our house. We opened a home daycare there. We did that for a couple years. And I think it was about the time I found a bologna sandwich inside my VCR. And some of you young people don't know what a VCR is. <laughs> or a bologna sandwich. Or, <laughs> so I was like, this home daycare, we, got, we can't do this anymore. They destroyed my house. So we actually went to our church. And uh, I didn't have any money at that time because we were home daycare people. Most home daycare people don't have any money, right? So uh, our church, we wanted to open a daycare center there. And it cost $5,000 to uh, put a... a uh, fire system in. Okay. So uh, my friend Joel Billings, my best friend, I uh, asked him to put money on a uh, advance on a credit card, which he did, and we uh, we opened our first centers at our church in the year 2000, 18 years ago, and we've opened nine centers since, and we just kept moving from there and never looked back. I never thought that oh my God, do I not want to do this? I saw it as an incredible money making opportunity, uh, but better yet, we were impacting the lives of kids. 100%. Yeah, so uh, your your path to success has definitely not been a straight line. You've had a lot of Zigzags, pivots along cross, the way. I've, I've bought centers. I've started from scratch. I've closed centers that were not profitable. I've done just about everything in the childcare business, and I've had a whole lot of fun doing it. 
Yeah. I probably lost a million dollars doing stupid stuff over the years, and a lot of it's in the book. So, uh, you know, anybody that wants to buy the book Child Care Millionaire is going to come out. It's, it's a way to avoid making stupid mistakes going forward if you're going to end the center. And sometimes avoiding a mistake in business is better than uh, doing something right. If you can keep from losing $100,000 on something dumb, that's a lot better than because uh, you avoid the embarrassment, number one, right. and it allows you to, to progress going forward. It puts you, puts you in a much better place. I mean, wisdom is when you learn from the mistakes of other people. Experience is when you learn from your own mistakes. I never want to learn from my own mistakes. It costs too much money. You know, I, and I really like that you've embraced the zigzags because I think if you hadn't, we would not have this book. And if you hadn't embraced the zigzags and the different paths you had to take, I don't know that any of us would be able to read Child Care Billionaire, so I am glad for one that you did. Thank you. So you are now a very successful child care business coach with our friend Chris Murray. How did that come about? How did you get to know her? What was your first experience with her? We love her here, but tell me about your experience with her. This is a, a most unique story because Chuck Gibbs, who owns Child Care CRM, uh, I got a postcard in the mail several years ago, and it was all on the Child Care CRM. It's how to, how to manage your your wait list, how to manage your, your customer database, and it really appealed to me. So I put the postcard on my desk, but being the busy guy, the ADD guy, you know, I get distracted very easily, you know, I'm already distracted here. Just, my mind's already thinking of another, my next book I'm already working on, right? <laughs> so it sat on my desk for two years. And every time I clean up my desk, I'd look at that stupid postcard, Joker's here, uh, <laughs> and it would just be looking there, and I was like, you know, I gotta call that guy, and then of course my brain would get distracted again. So one time, one day, I finally decided I would call the number, and I said, "I gotta check this thing out." And Chuck Gibbs answers the phone. His whole sales team was uh, was gone that day, and he decided he would answer the phone. And he made so much sense to me. I love the guy, uh, and so he signed me up, Child Care CRM. And I think it was maybe a month later in the mail, I get a. Uh, a thank you note from Chuck. Thank you for for joining our team. And here's a book. And it was Chris Murray's book. Okay. And I had never heard of Chris before. Didn't know anything about her. And uh, so I started reading her book. I was very excited. And I, I did a Google search. You know, found all these YouTube videos. She's amazing. And I was like, she's having an event down in Orlando, Florida, 2015 Child Care Success Summit. So I told my wife, I said, we're gonna go. I really didn't really expect I'd learned a lot because I thought I knew everything, you know, you know, I'm a cocky guy I've been doing 15 years. I, you what know, are you going to teach me? Seven figure business. <laughs> you know, I think I had it everything. I didn't think, what can she teach me, right. you know? So I went with an open mind and oh my God, was my, my head exploded there. <laughs> I'll talk a little bit more about the later, what I learned there, but that's how I met Chris Murray. And we've been incredible friends ever since. And she's just an amazing, amazing lady. Very knowledgeable. Have you always wanted to be a coach or be an influencer? How did you fall into this position uh, or fall up into the position? I it, guess? It's, it's weird. It, it's funny how it, the Lord works. You know, sometimes you don't really know what your path is going to be. And I've always been the kind of person that likes helping people. And Carol and I were the Navy. We're instructors. So we taught, you know, I like to teach in the daycare business. You know, we teach children and I've always wanted to teach children. Uh, teach my employees uh, personal development. Personal development mindset have always been big with me. And so and it was a year and a half ago, Chris was looking for a coach. And I was like, huh, I wonder if I want to, what if that'd be something I want to do? So I prayed about it and I was like, yeah, I think this is something I want to do. So I, even, I sent Chris this amazing uh, uh, Facebook message. And I said, Chris, I think, I think this is what I'm looking for. You know, I, I was going to retire when I hit 50 and that was my goal and I was all set to do that. And I was like, you know, I think this is where I can do this. Okay. And I think it'd be fun. And I called Chris up. She goes, oh my God, you would be good. This is great. You know, she goes, we got to talk. just that voice. And is that it? <laughs> just, oh my God, you would be so good. So I started working for her part-time last year for the first six months. And I went full-time with her in November. She's the only person in the world that could actually work for because I'm a very bad employee. Well, you're I, a great entrepreneur. I'm unemployable. <laughs> but she's the one boss that knows how to motivate me, and she's just an amazing person and a child care icon. Yeah. Fantastic. And her, her reach has just expanded so great over the years, and I'm glad that you are able to be a part of that. What do you love most about coaching these child care owners and directors? Um, the, I don't want to try not to get emotional. I'm a very emotional person. But the biggest takeaway I get from helping clients is 
getting out of their pain points. There are so many things in childcare that cause pain. Uh, staffing, enrollment, you know, kids calling in sick. A lot of our clients work, that we first meet them, they're working in the business. They're driving the bus. They're cooking the meals because there's cook called out sick. And they're getting stuck into the day of the day. They're putting fires out all day long. They're working 60 hours a week. And they're stressed and they're not enjoying it at all. Right. They're hating it. And so when I when they come aboard, I'm coaching with them, I immediately get them into uh, pain point elimination. I'm teaching them how to start working on the business, not in it. Things that I have done for years. I start to get them to enjoy the business again. And I've had emotional, I've been in tears with clients and the success stories are where I, I have a private client in Dubai. So I have private clients, I have clients all over the world, but I have a private client in Dubai and I was on the phone with them two days ago. And they were really struggling. They have three centers, their enrollment was way down, facing competition. And they were near tears when they told me they had 25 new enrollments their first month with me coaching them. Wow. And that just, I was like, okay, this is why I do what I do. Right. They were in incredible pain in the first month. Those 20, no, there is nothing in childcare that 10 new enrollments can't solve. You know, that, that's what we say. <laughs> but they had 25 their first month working with me. And that's, those are the successes that get me driving, get up in the morning. And it's like, I love my job. I love it. So, Brian, if somebody was interested in taking advantage of your childcare coaching, how would we go about doing that? So if you're a child care center owner and you have at least 50 children, I offer what we call a complimentary strategy session. And what this strategy session is like a 45 minute deep dive into some of the pain points of your business. Uh, let's just say your pain points enrollment, I'll give you two or three different concrete steps you can go implement in your program right now and help you get out of some of those pain points. Uh, and to sign up for one of these strategy sessions, if you go to childcaresuccess.com, and I'm sure you'll post the link right here sure. below me. Uh, in that link, you can book a strategy session with me. Complimentary, of course, 45 minutes long, and uh, I'll help you alleviate some of those pain points. And, uh, and maybe you'll see if coaching is right for you, and if not, at least I can give you 45 minutes of really help you get out of those pain points. I love it. So when you, you, when you met Chris Murray, you had signed on with CRM. And I'm really interested, we, we talked about how you found CRM, but when you brought that onto your center, because I will say as a director, when CRM was brought into my life, my first reaction was kind of hesitant to it, right? I, I didn't need one more thing to do. I was working in the business, yeah. driving the bus and doing the kitchen and all of that stuff. So how was I gonna manage this? So I'm interested to hear why you were confident it was going to be a good fit and how your staff reacted to it when you first brought it on. Have you had any hurdles to overcome with a system like that? Because it can be kind of an undertaking for a Right, center. so I really embraced this off because I mean, it, it, it's not cheap because I am tight. I am really tight with money. So when I looked at the price tag, I'm like, really? It chucks like, trust me, it'll work. And so I said, okay, I'll trust you. So. So I, I, I took and I, I educated myself on how to set everything up. So I took a couple hours and I really figured CRM out. And I got my drip campaigns really set well. So I did the work several years ago and those same drip campaigns are in effect today. So that little work I did three years ago or four years ago is still going today. The biggest thing about CRM was I noticed that uh, we probably got five enrollments within the first month just off CRM, which it, in my mind is like that paid for CRM for the next three years. So I was like, this is a no brainer. Why would I ever want to cancel this thing? Because what I was finding was my directors now saved them a lot of time because they were spending a lot of time following up with people. And when, when I started educating myself on marketing, I realized that it takes seven touch points minimum for a client to make a decision on childcare. And those seven points, I let Chuck do five of them with the CRM system. So I'm letting them do a pre-drip camp, a pre-tour drip, I'm doing a post-tour drip. I'm actually doing a post-enrollment drip. After they enroll, I drip on them uh, after they're already with us, you right. know? And I, I remember certain points. So, hey, happy 30 days. Thanks for being with us 90 days, 180 days. Happy one year anniversary with us. I let the computer do all the work. And it's, it's an incredible tool. It's helped retention. It's brought us probably hundreds of kids over the years. And uh, I could not speak enough of good thing. I, I love Chuck. I love you, Emily. And this <laughs> CRM is, and I, I brag about you everywhere I go. Great. It is a great software. I would love to point out that uh, Brian is enrolling at a much faster conversion rate than two years because it's not just one postcard sitting on the desk, right? <laughs> so, because yeah. he can drip more than one thing over and over. 
the two-year conversion goes out the window. <laughs> That's a good way to look at it, absolutely. So you have integrated CRM into your own business. Is it something you know that you recommend for other customers or other coaching clients that you're working with, or do you think it's it's too big for one center to take on? Yeah, so what I look at, I usually lose the threshold of, it depends on what the revenues are. You know, so I like, I'm recommending pretty much every client that I, that I coach, because I coach mostly the higher end clients. And no matter how many centers, the more centers you have, the more you need this. Uh, and if you're a multi-site owner, it's an absolute must. You know, you, if you're a single site owner, it depends on your revenues, if you can afford it or not. Uh, so I'm not gonna say everybody needs it because if you only have 18 kids in your center, it might not be price competitive. Uh, maybe, maybe not. But if you're a multi-site owner, 100%, if you have at least you know, 25, 30 kids in your center, absolutely, uh, it's, it's a time saver. Yeah. And the biggest thing my directors, they push back initially until I showed them the time savings. And I made it show, I showed them that they'll save a lot of time using the product. And even the people that didn't know anything about technology, and I have a, a lady who's like, I didn't know how to spell iPad, didn't know anything <laughs> about technology. And now she's an iPad whiz, CRM. She gets them in there. She had the little kiosk on her. She does all the, and she loves CRM. It was just took a little bit more work educating right. her on the tool. But once she got that in, and my daughter, I don't run the business anymore. My wife does. My kids run their business now. Uh, I, I've kind of stepped out of that so I can coach. Um, but my daughter handles the CRM and she absolutely loves the product. Okay. 100%. Awesome. Well, I want to get into a few of your nuggets of wisdom that you share in the book. If we can, can we do a little bit of a spoiler and go over some of them? Sure. So in the, the book is made up of 101 nuggets. And nuggets, it's just like a golden nugget. Uh, it's gold. And these 101 nuggets are uh, items that will save you money. Uh, or make you money or save you pain and uh, and give you a lot of success in your business. And it's also made up of business profiles. So I have 18 companies that I profile in there that all have seven figure revenues. Okay. They're all million, child care million businesses, million plus of revenues. And some of them have a multiple location, some have one location, but all of them are people that I've been working with over the years that have been very successful uh, as clients in, in, uh, in our child care success account. Well, there's a few of my favorite nuggets, if we can talk about them. So I want to talk about um, why you feel like core values in a child care center is important. I know we talk about it in the corporate side of the equation, but does it really work in a child care center to have core values and how do you utilize them? Yeah, so core values are something that are very important. It's one of the nuggets to always have core values. Uh, what core values are is a set of principles uh, that you're, you stand for as a company. So some of our core values at our center uh, are fun. We, we have fun every day at our center. Uh, teamwork is another one. Uh, we all pull our weight at our, com at, at our company. So by having core values, you can now hire based on them. So when we sit down with a new applicant, we say, here's what we stand for. Can you live up to those expectations? Whenever a, a team member is not pulling their weight, let's just say we call them in early because we need them to come in because somebody's sick and they say, oh, I can't do that. Then we go back to the core value. Wait a minute. You said the core value is teamwork. We all pull our weight here at the company. Uh, how come you're not pulling your weight? We discipline, we reward employees based on it. And I didn't pick the core values, my employees did. I think that's critical. Which is cool because it becomes their values. Right. And we sat in a room, we got them all together. We, we all, everybody threw up ideas for core values. We narrowed it down, we voted on them. They came up and I had nothing to do with it. And I have 65 employees, so they all just, they, they went and they had fun with it. And it, that's the values that my company stands for. I love that. I and love I recommend that. all companies have core values. And speaking of core values, at our Child Care Success Summit here in Dallas, October 25, 26, 27, we have Ann Rhodes, who is a speaker, and she built she wrote right. a book called Built on Values. And we talked all about core values. Yeah. So if, if uh, the Child Care Success Summit here in Dallas. Yeah, come uh, see us, everybody. I would come uh, to that Child Care Success Summit, and your life will change. It changed mine for sure. Hands down. It will change your life. I see people walk into that summit, one version of themselves, and leave just a totally transformed person, more confident. They have the life back in them. I mean, you, you can attest to that. You I was watch one of these them. people come in, and they're just almost the life is drained out of them. Oh, they're yeah. exhausted. They don't know how they're going to make it. They're at that turnaround point and they leave just energized and full of life and ready to go back and impact the lives of the kids in their schools and the, the teams that they work with. And I just think it's it's amazing to watch. I would oh, never miss a summit. It's, it's, a, it's a game changer. <laughs> yeah. Um, we, we use the word transformational because that's what it was for my business and a lot of the clients I work with. It 
total transformation of your business. That's a good word. So the other nuggets that really stuck with me, and you alluded to one earlier, but there was something that kind of blew my mind, and I would love for you to explain it, but you say in the book that five centers are easier to manage than one, and I cannot imagine how that could be possible, <laughs> but you're the expert, so tell me why. Absolutely. So uh, the book is broken down into seven chapters. Chapter seven is all about expansion. I put it in last because you've got to do all the nuggets before it to, to get to the expansion. And five centers are so much easier to manage than one. When we had one center, it was the hardest job. And if you're a center owner with one center, one location, you're working harder than most of the people that have 5, 10, 15. We have clients with 30 locations that work a lot less than people with one location. Reason being is uh, simple physics. You can't be in more than one place at one time. Since I own five schools now, I can only be in one school at one time. So I am forced to have trusted people in place doing their job at all times. And I have to delegate. I have to delegate to an operations manager to do a lot of the stuff that I used to do when I had one or two schools. So by force of delegation, you can work yourself out of a job. My wife and I vacation a lot and my business runs a lot of itself. My wife probably works 15 hours a week in our business and to run five schools, $2 million company yeah. without any problems. And it's the ownership side just working 15 hours a week because we have people and systems in place. When we had one school, we were working 60 hours a week. And now with five, she's working 15 hours a week. And it's all, and we help our clients get to that point. And I know you attribute that to the great teams and the ability to delegate or the need to delegate. If you're sitting at one site and you think, yeah, that, that just can't happen for me though. There's another piece of the book that you talk about, a warrior mentality and, and being recession proof and how to be profitable. So I would imagine those things kind of go into making the jump from one to two and two to five. So can you tell us a little bit about how would you jump from one to five if you feel like it's impossible right now? Well, you have to go from one to two first, yeah, absolutely. then two to three. We recommend that. And sometimes you go from three to four, then four back to three, then three back to four, and four to five. Sometimes it's not always right. a straight room Good point. to five. I mean, I went one, two, three, four, three, four, five, six, seven, five, six. I've done it all. And You've I've done closed the whole algebra equation. Right. I've done it all. But you got to realize the path to success is not a straight line, but it is a line that does go up. Okay. You just have to do some trajectory along the way. And one of my nuggets in the book is have a warrior mindset. And that is always just go out and get it. You know, go uh, go out and get what you want. And three of the acquisitions that I did in my business, I went out and I got them to sell to me. You mean they weren't for sale? No, they, they weren't for sale. They had no interest in selling. But I sent them a letter, told them that I'm interested in uh, expanding in their market. And if you're ever interested in selling, give me a call. Uh, Three of them gave me a call. That is a warrior mindset if I've that ever is a heard of one. Mindset. Go out and get the business. And one of them, I, I, you know, I opened up just to know that eventually I would probably shut it down, which I did, uh, <laughs> because I wanted to absorb and get rid of a competitor and also, uh, you know, dominate my marketplace a little bit more. So it's it's all about having that a mindset that you want to be the big fish in a small pond. You want to control your market. It's much better to have three schools in one area than one school in three different areas. Because you can share staff, you can share resources, you get a lot of savings in there. And a place like Texas, my God, you could put a school on every street corner in one uh, one town. There's schools everywhere here. We share parking lots You can really right? dominate a market here. Yeah. You know, And there's a lot of places like that in America. Just people think, oh, I gotta put one you know, 20 miles away because I'm competing against each other. I have schools three quarters of a mile apart. Wow. Yeah, of course, I run them under two different brands. Right. Uh, and this is another thing. Where'd you get that idea from? I thought it like a Seinfeld episode. And <laughs> okay, Elaine, stop. I have to know more. <laughs> what? Elaine goes into a, a store and the, 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 the person behind the counter is really rude to her. So she goes, I'm just going to take my business down the road. So she goes and takes her business down to the, to the competitor, which is owned by the same person. <laughs> And I'm like, that's brilliant. Lessons from Jerry Seinfeld, everybody. So I run a that's Christian school, three quarters of a mile away from a secular school. They're two different names companies, two different brands. Uh, but basically, I kind of compete against each other, but not really. Right. And people don't know that, that I own both of them. I love it. I've had people mad at me at one location, go down and enroll the other at my other location. <laughs> I don't have a clue. <laughs> oh my gosh. So... I know, you know, the R word, we're all scared of it. It's coming. We know the recession is somewhere down the line. We've been through one. We never want to go back, but the truth is it's going to happen, right? Yeah. So 
there is a, a very important nugget in your book about being recession proof. Um, can you speak a little bit about that? Yeah, so recession proofing your business is very important. Uh, it will come, it happens statistically every 10 years, there's, a, there's like a reset of the economy. And it goes up and now right now things are cooking, the economy is great, best it's been in a long, long time. But it's gonna, there's gonna have a reset point eventually. What happens is most child care center owners get to a point where things are good right now, so they're overspending. They're buying things they shouldn't buy, they're making their debt load high, they have too many admin costs, so they're, what we call their break-even point is about 65 to 70% of, of revenue, meaning that they've got a 60 to 75% occupancy just to make a profit, and that's dangerous. Right. Because during a recession, the average child care center could lose 35% of their children. If you lose 35% of your children, and you need 70% to make it to break even, you're gonna lose money in the next recession. It's gonna kill you. And a lot of child care center owners are borrowing money too, making capital improvements, which is nothing wrong with that, but they're overextending themselves debt-wise. They're getting themselves in a bad debt to income ratio. Whereas if things happen uh, with the economy, they're gonna be in a bad position. There's a reason that 15 to 20% of child care centers close during the recession, and that is why. So what I did during the last recession is I bought up competitors. Uh, I had kept cash on hand. I put myself in a good uh, position. I make money at 35% occupancy in my centers, wow. which a lot of people can't do. I keep a good low uh, a center where I have low rents and I have good deals. So the next recession, I'm already have cash on hand, ready to go buy out a couple of competitors that I know will be in a weak financial position. So what I tell people in a book is to get yourself in a good financial position. So when it does come, you can survive the competitors. And remember, if you, you have a here and you have a competitor there, all you have to do is outlast them because if they go out before you, you get all their kids, which helps you during recession. Am I advocating for that? No, but it's just natural progression. Right. You're gonna get their staff members, the best staff members, you're gonna get their kids, and you're gonna get their stuff at a discount. And I never pay more than 10 cents on the dollar for used equipment. Uh, I love it. <laughs> Any other nuggets in the book? that you want to go over. I am anxious to talk about the summit and it's just around the corner. So um, actually one of my nuggets is to attend a child care success summit. Perfect. Let's talk uh, about because it. Because it was so trans transformational for my business. October 25, 26, 27, we're going to be here in Dallas, Texas at the Sheridan. And if you go to childcaresuccesssummit.com, uh, we actually have a promo deal. So if you want to save $600 on a ticket, $600, $600? that's a lot of money. Yeah, so we have $600 savings right now. If you go to the link that I'm gonna post right here, right below, uh, we have a uh, drive deal, uh, drive deal 18. So it's bit.ly forward slash drive deal 18. We have a $600 savings on a ticket right now. Okay. And uh, it's good for the next couple days. So if you wanna go there and you wanna get that ticket. We have a couple tickets left. So, uh, and you're gonna say, you know, it's a lot of money for a ticket it's a lot of money not to go. Because if you're struggling with pain points, you're struggling with enrollment, you're struggling with staffing, you can't afford not to come here. Because in these three days, we're gonna help you get out of that. We're focused on a couple things in this summit. We're focused on uh, uh, staffing uh, to help you get a proper culture. We're focused on enrollment to help you grow your center. And we're focused on expansion for those people that want to grow what we call an empire, yeah. a childcare empire. So we're focusing on all those things, and you're going to be able to network with almost 700 other child care center owners and help to really grow your business. Yeah, and I will tell you guys, I think the networking is worth its weight in gold alone. Going there and being with other masterminds, just like Brian and, and all of our friends there, the conversations that you have after the sessions and before the sessions and in the exhibitor hall, I mean, those, for me, watching our, our clients, they just paid for the summit and the things that they took away. So I love the networking abilities. We will be there too. Of course, we'll be in Exhibitor Hall, but we also have a session that you can catch us at. Brian, are you doing any live speaking at the summit? Yeah, so I'm doing an hour long presentation on Warrior Mindset. I'm gonna talk about my book in there. Uh, passion, uh, we'll talk about passion, profitability. Uh, there's a lot of things that I'm gonna talk about the mindset and personal development. Uh, so I'm doing a whole session on Friday for an hour long session. Uh, I'm going to be there signing my book, so you know, come there. I'll have them there. I'm going to do some autograph, and I'll personalize it for you. And one of my business associates, uh, Cindy Alexander, she wrote a book as well, and she's going to be there uh, presenting and signing a book as well. And hers is Relationship Roadmap. If you want to find out how to uh, 
how to deal with staff members, which is tricky sometimes. <laughs> uh, relationship roadmap. It's, it's a whole roadmap on how to collaborate with your staff members and really get them on board with, uh, with your vision in your company. So It sounds like deal. between your book and Cindy's book well, and the summit, we've just got a solution it, for it. <laughs> there, you're going to solve a lot of pain points. If you have any pain points in your child care business, you absolutely 100% need to go. It'd be worth the last minute. Uh, you know, if you had to drive all the way from Bangor, Maine, to, Houston, to Dallas, Texas, to come to this event, I would sleep in my car if I had to. We had a, a lady, Kim Palmeris, who said she had no money to go to this child care success summit. She said she literally borrowed the last dollar on her credit card as a cash advance to come to an event a couple years ago. And since then, her business has totally transformed. She's seven figures yep. to the positive of where she was many years ago. Her business was really close to bankruptcy, she says. And it was a total transformation. We have another client who came. She said her first month after the Child Care Success Summit, she rolled 25 new children. So we have all these success stories. If you look on our website, uh, childcaresuccesssummit.com, you'll see a bunch of testimonials that talk about the transformation our clients have received and other people that have come receive. And uh, you definitely, and she has a money back guarantee. If you go there and you do not like after the end of the first day, she'll completely give your money back. And I think she throws a couple hundred dollars extra on top of refunding your ticket just for your time. So satisfaction guaranteed or your money back. Can't beat that. I love it. So definitely come see us at the summit. Again, the link is below so you can learn more about the summit. You can take advantage of the $600 off, which is unheard of. I haven't heard that in a long time. So take advantage of that. Brian, before we go, I would just like to ask you a couple of questions. So my first one is if you could destroy one myth about our childcare industry, there's a lot of them, but if you could just erase one from the planet today, what would it be? Uh, childcare is not daycare, meaning that it's not put a kid in front of a TV and sit there all day long and then the parent come picks them up. And that really drives me nuts. Uh, we actually don't even have TVs at our center. And a child will learn more from zero to five than they'll learn their entire rest of their life. So we mold the child in the childcare industry more than anything, more than any college, more than any high school, more than any preparatory school, more than anything they're going to do the rest of their life. We have the most important job out there. And for people to think that we're just sitting them in a room and you know and they play all day well sometimes that play they're building things and i te i tell my teachers this is the mindset they come in that they're going to have lunch with a future attorney they're going to tie the shoes of a future doctor they might be sitting there coloring with a future fireman that might save somebody's life so to look at these little people as future whatever Whatever they want to be, they're going to be the ones that are going to be taking care of us in the future. There could be an astronaut there. The person who serves, cures cancer is in that crowd. Treat them like that, not like children. I love that. And uh, that's, what, that's what I don't like about child care. They, 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 they we're just, you know, we're babysitting and it's not babysitting. I agree. You might have just given me mine for 2018, but what would your aha moment of the year be? aha moment of the year probably writing this book was the aha moment because it's something i've always wanted to do i thought i'd write it about maybe my navy adventures or my high school adventures or my wife and i are adrenaline junkies you know so we we like you know skydiving and, and sailing and scuba diving so i thought i'd be an adventure book and to, to to know that my first book is about child care uh so having that published was a dream come true for me and thanks to chris murray for kind of nudging me along and encouraging me to yeah. write this. So. Well, we're all looking forward to it. Again, Child Care Millionaire on sale here in the next few days, available at the summit. You can get it signed by Brian. Brian, it was great to have you in the studios. We hope we can have you again sometime, and we'll see you in October, October 25, 26, 27 at the summit. If you're here in town or you can make it come a day earlier for CRM Live, we'll be hosting you here as a pre-conference kickoff. We'll put that link below too, but come join us, get to know the team. We're going to be going over industry benchmarks like we do every year. The blind statistics are a crowd favorite. You don't want to miss those. We'll also host a live stakeholder forum so you can give us some feedback on where you want the childcare CRM product to go or what you want to see from us in the next coming year.